right, guys. We're here in Santa Barbara, California with Britt Merrick. Britt, we're stoked, invited us to the house. We're super excited to talk about the new Neckbeard 2. So, thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks for coming. Stoked to be hanging with you guys. Yeah, so, okay, my I'm super excited, frothing to talk about Neckbeard 2. I've had a chance to ride a couple of the models, but why don't you tell us first what, you know, inspired a second model of yeah. the Neckbeard? Yeah. Well, it actually came about because Stab was doing that project with Dane where they were collecting a bunch of sort of different boards that in their perspective were interesting from different shapers and manufacturers. Some of them had history, some of them didn't so much, but just, you know, they've done the Stab in the Dark in the past where they take kind of high performance short boards and have the surfer ride that. But this was the first time doing sort of alternative designs. So there were some ASIMs and twin fins and mid-length boards. And they approached us uh, wanting to do the Neckbeard in particular. You know, the Neckbeard has like a long history with Dane and with Channel Islands and uh, was a really popular board. So they, they approached us to do that. That's kind of what sparked it. And so I just knew I had to make a neck beard for Dane. And so I just called up Dane and said, what do you want to do? Like, what, what version do you want? Because there's a bunch of different ones. You know, anytime you're working on a board with a surfer, especially someone like Dane, you go through a bunch of different iterations. And the neckbeard particularly kind of has like a long, w weird history. It actually depends on who you ask, <laughs> where, what its origins are. Sure. Everyone at Channel Islands and Dane, we all have a different story of how it came about. But there was a bunch of different ones uh, and versions of it. So called Dane, said, hey, dude, we're doing this project with Stab. Obviously, you know about it. What, you know, what version of the neckbeard do you want? He said, well, let's look at some. So we got together here at the ranch. We grabbed a bunch of different ones, like some of his old ones and the original one, and then some cuts of the ones that we eventually went to market with that were different than the original one and sure. different than some of his favorite ones. And we got them all in the shaping room. And, <clears throat> excuse me, kind of looked at him, and he's like, I don't actually, I'm not that interested in any of them. So <laughs> Dane's kind of like, I don't know, Dane would say this, but he either wants, like, when he gets aboard, he either wants it to feel exactly like the original one or to be totally different. That's what that's what he wants. Sure. If it's anywhere in between, he's kind of not that stoked on it, which is presents challenges in, in, in and of itself. Right. So, <coughs> excuse me, he looked at the original ones and he's like, oh, I'm kind of over that and I don't like what the tail looks like there and the nose is narrow on that one and... And so we kind of had to start from scratch a little bit uh, because he just wanted to feel something different. You know what I mean? I think sure. in his mind, the neck beard, he'd kind of like been there, done that. So that's kind of what got us started on, okay, we need to come up with a, a neck beard too. So Britt, you mentioned that you had the first one. I would imagine this it, just the one. Yep. This All right. So tell one. us a little bit about it. Maybe talk us through the attributes of this one, kind of where the neck beard one is yeah. and where the neck beard two is. Yeah, this board goes all the way back to 2009, I believe, the summer of 2009. And uh, Dame was just wanting to ride some shorter stuff, you know, some, some we call them now step downs, which they're super common now, but at the time they weren't that common. He wanted to chop a few inches off his boards and sure. just try different stuff. And he had been trying a few different things and just to kind of keep himself interested and in lesser waves. So we had been trying a bunch of different stuff for him and chopped some tails off some MBB3s and, and whatnot. And then this was a hand shape that was kind of done sporadically in the moment, trying to meet the needs of what he was looking for. And uh, he loved it. And then after this, there came several iterations. And one of those iterations became the dumpster diver. So at the same time, we were kind of developing the neck beard and the dumpster diver. They're super related, but the dumpster diver has more curve and the rocker and the neck beard's a bit straighter, but similar outlines. This had the chopped off squared tail that the uh, neck beard has, but at one point we rounded it for him, put around the squash on, he wanted to feel that. And then Dane hurt his knee while this board was in development. So we were going to market with the board while he was injured. And so with some of the factory team sort of tester guys, we developed a version of it that was a little more user friendly. Like the first one had a really wide square tail and a pretty deep single concave through it. And it was a bit hard for your average surfer to really push that tail around. For Dane, it made perfect sense. Sure. But for other guys, we, we ended up narrowing the tail a bit and adding some V in the back that kind of allowed it to roll, you know, to rail, rail the rail yeah. a bit more easily. Um, 
And so that was the one that went to market. Dane never necessarily liked that one. He never really rode that board. <laughs> so he rode different versions of it. So that's why when we came back to the table, we're like, there's all these different versions. Oh, sure. And he wanted to go back to a little wider tail. He liked that wider tail. Um, so I grabbed one that was kind of an in-between thing, a blank. And uh, I took all that V out, planed the V out, widened up the tail a little bit by cutting a little length off the end, straightened the rocker a bit through here, just looking at it, knowing what Dane likes now. I thought he would like a little flatter planing surface right here. Um, the nose is just a touch wider than I think the, the version that we went to market with. So just subtle things that Dane loved. When he got on the board, he loved it. So that, that you know that's what we try to do is, we try to take the best surfers and give them something that they love. Like that's what's exciting as a shaper, right? That's what I want to do. Right. Like, gosh, this guy's so talented. He's so good. Um, it's really a challenge to make him something he loves. So, and again, we were working against that thing like, oh yeah, I already rode those ones. I don't like that one. Oh, those are too small now. So those changes uh, worked really well. If you see the stab film, Dane's, you know, surfing pretty unbelievable in it. So that's the neck beard too. Right. And that's how we're rolling it out. Cool. So the other thing I have is we have glass and fins yeah. on this one. I believe I haven't seen the acid test from Stab. So yeah. I've kind of been holding back, withdrawn, because I don't want that to taint what he says about it. I don't want it to taint anything that I want to experience myself as yeah. a surfer. So you I also, haven't seen it. You also it. don't want to watch Dane surf and then go surf. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. And I'm frothing to watch it for sure because yeah. I love watching Dane surf. But, you know, with you guys, made me three different. Um, Neckbeard 2s, this one is an EPS with glass end fins. I believe this is a medium fin. Mm -hmm. And the reason for this was something like this is what Dane was riding in that acid board test, right? Yeah, Dane was riding uh, EPS foam with a wood stringer with glass on. Okay. So that's kind of just the construction that we settled on for um, that thing. Dane was excited about glass ons. I like EPS and boards this size. You know, mm -hmm. I think it has a certain pop that feels pretty good. Uh, so this one's exactly like the one that he was riding. Right. Yeah. And it, this board, I've ridden it probably two days and then two to four foot surf, and it's incredible. I really like the square tail. I had the original neck beard with the squash. Yeah. And it was great. Super fun board, really fast down the line. But I was kind of shy from riding the square tail because I had mm -hmm. never really ridden one before, you yeah. know? But with the, I've noticed with the square tail here, it seems like when I'm sitting right over that third fin, you can really pivot off this right. little corner real yeah. well. So I can come off the bottom and do big round turns and try and throw the tail backside, front side, or I can pivot quick. Yeah. And that's one thing I noticed about this board that I, that I remember I couldn't do as much with it when it was a squash. I right. just really feel like it pivots fast. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's actually surprising what, what the square tail does. It looks like that would kind of slow you down when you're coming out of the lip. It seems like so much area back there, but it's actually really quick out of the top. And if yeah. you want it to hold, it holds. Sure. But if you want to bust it out, it does that really quickly. Yeah, and one of the other things I wanted to mention is, you know, a lot of a lot of people, like a lot of aerialists, like some of the best servers in the world, when they're talking about a board, like a stab in the dark project or whatever, they'll say maybe a board feels good. Some boards feel better in the air and some boards want to do bigger rail turns, but it's hard to find that happy medium of a board that wants to do both. Mm -hmm. And I can never relate to that because I don't do airs very much, yeah. right? But when I got on this particular board right here, I just, I like, there was a couple of times where I did like three, tr attempted three errors in one session, which wow. I never do. <laughs> so I feel like it's carrying so much speed and lift in the tail that it actually wants to project, not just down the line, but it also wants to project out like of the water. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if you just watch that um, contest at the, at the Waco wave pool, the Aton Osborne one, he was riding one of these boards, That's the exact one right here. Right. And it just gets a lot of pop out of the lip. So for that air thing, you know, what you really need is you need that pop out of the lip. And that's exactly what it is. A lot of boards are a trade-off and you can't get that pop because of the tail configuration or the rocker, but this thing seems to really pop. I mean, Dane in that film that you'll see, he's, he's pretty high a few times. And wow. Aton was like doing unbelievable airs on it. Well, I'm excited. This um, particular neck beer with the glass in fins, I haven't had glass in since probably the mid 90s. Yeah. Glass and is um, thick. the board's super light. Yeah. I feel like it's got good flex, like the tail has good flex, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I mentioned to you earlier 
um, when you and I were talking before we started shooting that with the, even with this medium fin, since I'm always riding a large fin for maximized speed, this board's flying yeah. in some of the footage we got. And it's only two to four feet, which I would normally put a large fin in and go surf. But I just feel like the, the board design and the fins, I feel like you can get real progressive. Like I can get a little more trick oriented in the pocket and the board has a lot more flow in and out off the lip. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like above the lip. Right. I'm not talking about errors. I'm just yeah. talking about getting it to slide and to be a little bit more easy for me to manipulate the board there. Yeah, right, with the smaller fins. Mm -hmm. The other thing is this board has so much inherent speed in it. You know, you look at the plan shape, it's just really wide and, and pretty symmetrical, like straight curves. Mm -hmm. And then the rocker, there's so much inherent speed in this board that you don't need that much fin to generate speed. Right. You don't need all that lift. Um, which I think also makes a board great for average surfers. Like today, you and I went and surfed and the waves were tiny, like right. it was tiny. And I'm six foot six, but I could still get going like on a knee high wave on this board. Sure. You know, so it's not just like for the aerial guys, but for the guys that just want to cruise and have inherent speed and get going and smaller waves. But that's, that's the rad thing is like, you can just cruise it in smaller waves and you have all this get up and going speed, but it rips like as hard as you want you know what i mean right. dane felt super unlimited on it when he was surfing in that stab thing he felt like he could just go wherever on the thing. yeah you, the last thing i wanted to talk to you about brit like is the rocker the same on the old neckbeard as the new neckbeard too did you change much in the rocker yeah the rocker is generally the same i just tweaked it a little bit you know for kind of what I, I i think dane would like to feel now so again i i took out the v that was in the middle that was on a later version of the neck beard right in this area i took mm -hmm. that out so that's going to change the rocker line down the center created a single concave there so that kind of straightens that rocker out the back a mm -hmm. little bit and i kind of straightened this rail rocker here a bit you know what i mean just kind of made it a bit faster and flatter through that section so sure. just a couple little tweaks other than that it's the same general rocker it seems like this when you straighten this out right here if to me it feels like it's got a big sweet spot under my front foot yeah. Cause I don't, I don't nail it every time when right. I stand up. Sometimes it's a little narrow or a little wide, but I felt like the board always has that get up and go real quick. And that, I really like that about a flatter rocker board in the belly. And then I've been riding in like overhead surf and I feel like the tail rocker and the board's holding just fine. Yeah. Yeah. So. It's kind of surprising. You kind of would look at it and think it's not going to hold. It's going to wash out. It's right. so much width and it's flat back there, but it seems to really hold. Yeah, it's been a really fun experiment for me, like I said, with it being the first square tail that I've ridden. So in two days of shooting on this board, we got enough footage to run a review just on the EPS with glass in fins. Sick. And I'm pretty I'm pretty psyched to order more boards with glass in fins, because yeah. I don't travel much, right. you know what I mean? But yeah, um, the, you know, glass on's like, the only thing that now enters in your mind is like, ah, oh, gosh, I just wonder if I put that one set of fins in there, how that would go. It's true. But when glass-ons work, nothing feels sicker. Right. You know what I mean? And I think for guys from our era, like, there's a nostalgia to it, too. We grew up glass-on fins. Yep. White boards, white fins. Like, I love the way this looks. I think that's the sickest looking thing in a board. Yeah. Like a white, white board with white glass-on fins. And I think when that all works, there's nothing that works better. But then that thing creeps in like, ah, oh, maybe I should have a little bigger fin today. And right. then it gets in your head about glass on. Sure, but. sure. And the unlimited options of all the cool fin templates that are yeah, out there. Yeah, exactly. It's just fun to, you know, kind of revisit stuff like this because of the glass and fins. And maybe there's not that those plastic boxes and stuff mm -hmm. that maybe it's it's affecting flex. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Absolutely. it doesn't, maybe it doesn't, if you have a big future box here or even FCS2 box, is it limiting flex on the tail somewhat? Yeah. And I just feel like the board, there's a great connection with this yeah. particular board to me right now. So. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, there's no question that those things affect flex. And man, I've been thinking about that a lot lately and working you know, with the guys on tour with that a lot this year is flex in the last couple feet of the board, the last tail. You know, we put so much carbon on them these days on the tail and uh, different butterfly patches for strength and all that. I, I, I just think that the tails need to have more flex in them. I think we've got them pretty locked up with current construction and all the carbon and stuff. So, which if you don't have a stringer, then carbon is appropriate. But I've just been working on that a lot and trying to get more flex out the tail and a better flex out the tail. And um, that's been kind of intriguing. So awesome. I'm, I'm glad that you're kind of clued into that. Yeah, yeah. I just kind of felt it in a, in a, I'm trying to articulate what feels different between not just the flex of the board 
in the regular EPS with the glass ends is the spine tech feels a little bit stiffer. So if I'm getting it and I'm pushing on it and the board's flexing, I feel like it rebounds faster mm -hmm. because it's stiffer, right? Yeah, so right. it's loading and it's reflexing back and it feels like it's got more pop than this regular EPS. Not good or bad or indifferent. Sure. Yeah. They just have a totally different feel, yeah. but it all feels good. Yeah, cool. There's nothing negative about it yeah. for me because I feel like I, it just, I'm constantly learning about things. Nice. That's what it's all about. Yeah, and have fun. Yeah, that's also what it's all about. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for joining us on the show yeah, and having, having us up. Yes, yeah, Neckbeard's super fun. We're having a good time. Awesome, good. I'm glad. Thank you.